Hello everyone, it is Nat here and today we are talking auto-tune in GarageBand. And like it or love it, auto-tune is here to stay and as a music producer or recording artist it's really handy to know how to access the feature within your given digital audio workstation. Here in GarageBand we have a built-in auto-tune feature. We're looking at a simple little composition that I've made and there is a vocal track right here. I'm going to access the auto-tune uh, feature by clicking on this vocal track and opening the editor. There's a few ways to get to the editor. We can simply double click on a vocal region and it will open the editor down the bottom. We can also utilize the uh, button here that looks like a pair of scissors that will close and open the editor. E is the shortcut and we can also go up to view and show editor. So on the editor, we have a track and region setting. We want to select the track setting and this pitch correction here is basically a auto tune uh, feature that's built in. Let's have a quick listen to my vocal here um, without auto tune on it. I heard you're back in town with a dime. I scared about me, but I don't have the time. Okay, so that performance was reasonable. It wasn't completely uh, on key. So my philosophy with auto-tune is there are really two main uh, ways you can use it. The first is if you are a, a reasonable singer or a good singer and you're just wanting to slightly correct a performance, uh, if you have limited time in the studio, if you're making a demo, or if you can't be bothered doing you know 20 takes and you've only got three or four takes, you can take the best take and just fix it up. Uh, the second way is if you want to get that ridiculously auto-tuned effect like we hear in modern uh, hip-hop, R&B and pop, things like that. So the first uh, method is I'm just going to dial this pitch correction up about halfway and that's going to um, still sound fairly natural. It's just going to snap uh, my pitch up to the nearest semitone and let's have a listen to that. I heard you're back in town with out of time so that has um, fixed a few of the slight pitching errors where I was a little bit sharp or flat. If I dial this all the way up to 100, it's going to sound uh, quite auto-tuned. It's going to snap it hard to the next semitone, which is the next half note, the nearest half note. Let's have a listen to that. I heard you're back in town with out of time. I scared about my but I don't have the time. So you could hear there that it kind of, we did hear that auto tune effect. Um, but there was only one issue is that because I ramped up to a note um, or I hit one that was a little bit out, it snapped it hard to the to a semitone um, and which is a note outside of the key of the song. So it doesn't sound very good. If I want to really get that proper auto tune sound in the key of this song, I need to tell this uh, auto-tune plugin to limit it to the key of the song. And this does present another issue uh, because uh, for the most part, um, most garage band users do not enter the key of their song before they start. So I'm going to show you up the top here, right here on this panel. We have the key signature and the time signature of the song. So if you know a little bit about music theory, um, you will easily know uh, what key you're playing in and what time signature you're in. But uh, for people who don't know a lot about music theory, um, that can be a bit of a challenge. And now this song is not in C major. I uh, know that it's in a different key. So if I hit limit to key, it's going to snap every single note that I have here hard to the C major, and it's not going to sound very good. Let's have a listen. I heard you're back in town with out of time. I scared about my but I don't have the time. So you can see there, um, because those notes I was hitting were not in the key of C major, it was kind of, um, you know, freaking out the the plug-in there, the um, system, and it was wavering and sounding really odd. Um, so th the problem is, is if I change that key signature there, it's going to do a global transpose. It's going to change all of my MIDI regions and all of my, uh, some of the audio even if I've got... Um, you know, it doesn't do it every time, but sometimes it, it puts the audio up in a different key. Um, and if you need to find out the key of the song that you're in, you can use the musical typing. I'm going to hit Command-K, 
and select a instrument track here. And the key of the song that you're in is, is usually the first chord or the chord that you keep coming back to when it resolves. So let's have a listen and see if we can figure out what key this song is in. So what's that first note? So you've got G major or G minor. So let's see which one that is. So this is in G minor. If I was to just change the uh, key signature to G minor, it would transpose everything as well. So it would sound weird. I heard you're back in town with out of time. So it's transposed all of my MIDI there. Um, so I'm going to actually just undo that, edit, undo, and I heard you. what I will do is do this little hack, really, um, to get around that is select everything that I've got and I'm going to cut and paste. So Command X, it's gotten rid of everything. And before I paste it back in, I'm going to change it to the key that I actually need. And then now let's have a listen whether this works. I heard you're back in town with out of time. Ask it about my butter. Okay, so now that is hard snapping those notes rather to, than the next semitone, it's snapping them to the key of G minor, which is really handy uh, because you literally cannot hit a wrong note. And this is helpful for singers who have a lot of trouble with their pitch you can make sure that their vocals are only limited to the key of the song you're in. Uh, I have an upcoming video on a free auto-tune plugin that you can use in GarageBand that is a lot more powerful than GarageBand's inbuilt feature. So uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description. Um, and this is actually uh, a short excerpt um, from a course that I'm currently creating called How to Use GarageBand, The Complete Guide. And when that's finished, I'll pop a link to that in the description as well. That is a complete course, uh, everything you need to know to get a massive head start uh, producing commercial quality, releasable music in GarageBand. Um, and if you enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe uh, to this channel and support us with a comment or a like. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this content and I'll see you soon in another video.